Um, so, John, it would be great if you could just tell us a little bit about who you are, your background and what your current role is. Yeah, sure. Um, so, my name is John McCafferty. Um, uh, first came to Cambridge as one of the founders of Cambridge Antibody Technology back in 1990. A very exciting time for me. I was one of the first two employees, uh, started January 1990. And by December of that year, I had the first author nature paper describing this new technology uh, called Phage Display, which be was basically a technology that underpinned that company really to this day. And it's a technique that allowed the company to generate human antibodies to any targets uh, as required. After 12 great years there, I moved back to academia for 10 years, the Sanger Institute and then the University of Cambridge here, biochemistry department. And then about five years ago, I decided to start uh, my own new company called Diontas. And, and how would you describe your role then in the venture? Well, I'm CEO and founder of the company. Uh, really, my background is very much that of a scientist. Um, I didn't really come through a, a business route as such. And, uh, you know, it's the thing that probably gives me the greatest pleasure within the company, that, that role of scientist. However, as CEO, I've had to let go and, you know, let other people get on with their job. And so basically, I'm uh, in charge of overall strategy and direction of the company, as well as being involved in day-to-day -day, uh, uh, issues. Uh, in the very beginning, it was a small company with myself and three people who'd been in my academic group. And so at that stage, I really had to do everything that was not lab work. Uh, we've grown the company organically through uh, providing services that people pay for. So we're actually a profitable biotechnology company, a rare beast uh, these days. And um, But we struck quite a good deal several years in that then allowed me to hire some more senior people and create a management team. It was obvious to me by the time we had about eight or nine people that I was becoming the limiting or was in danger of becoming the limiting factor. And so that break gave me the opportunity to hire a CEO, sorry, a CBO, a COO and a CTO and therefore distribute the, the, the roles to some extent. And so again, my role is to just make sure we're all working together and coordinating that effort. So could you describe your venture in your own words? Sure. The uh, venture is basically we're an antibody dis discovery company uh, using this underpinning technology uh, called Phage Display. Um, uh, we're a profitable company. We provide a, a fee-for-service offering to other companies who want to identify antibody drugs. So a typical client may be um, from a VC-backed startup. Uh, it may, in some cases, there's large pharma who give us their difficult projects, the ones that they may already have failed at, and basically we uh, send them off with a antibody drug lead and back up to take further into development. As a company's grown, we've been investing in technology trying to stay one step ahead so uh, there's one particular technology that we're now offering that is um, we've been working on for the last three or four years uh, so that's looking into the medium term to have something else to move on to we have an additional technology which probably has got another year or two to incubate so we're trying to think about short term medium term long term uh, in terms of the technology and in addition we've started generating our own assets again with a view to licensing those so what motivated you to set up this venture? And is it what you expected? Um, okay, just give me a second. Okay. Uh, what motivated me? Well, I would say that when I started my career, it wasn't necessarily with a view that I was going to set up a company. I was very much a dyed-in-the-wool scientist thinking about publications and grants and so on. Um, but in many ways, I realised that there's more ways that one can contribute as a scientist uh, and the, the simple metric of, um, of uh, senior author publications in some of the top journals is certainly one way of uh, assessing or measuring your own contribution but equally the idea of uh, contributing to drug discovery that can in turn contribute to human health uh, was appealing. Uh, in some ways there was also the response to situations that I found myself in uh, in academia that were less than perfect and the idea of having control of my own destiny is one that uh, was a strong motivation. Mm -hmm. And is it what you expected? Uh, is it what I expected? Um, so before I came to my current venture at IONTAS, I was one of the founders at Cambridge Antibody Technology um, and what I learned there was that um, 
things never stand still, there's continuous change and adaption. And that's what I found in this current venture as well. So in that respect, I think I expected uh, what I found there. Uh, also in this case, um, perhaps of a more senior role than I had at CAT, and so I'm exposed to much more of the buffeting winds that are, that are out there pushing that change. Um, but essentially, it's as I expected, yes. So how did the idea of the adventure originate? So I found myself in the biochemistry department here at the university running a number of projects that were essentially lead isolation, lead optimization projects as they would be described in the industry. Um, and also realised that what we were doing was probably more valued in the commercial world. And so um, after a period of reflection, I decided that the, the future really lay in a, a standalone independent company offering uh, antibody drug discovery services uh, with the and, and as I say fundamentally I'm a scientist and also felt this gave me an opportunity to scratch that scientific itches in ways that uh, I felt were um, ha had opportunities for development in the future without necessarily having to bend the knee to, to venture capitalists or uh, grant committees. So how did you make it happen? So I had I was fortunate enough to have uh, several really talented people working with me within my academic group uh, and I really wanted to try and hold on to that if possible. So in the beginning uh, we went out to a number of companies uh, discussing the idea of generating human antibodies for them. I also realised that there was uh, still a demand for human antibodies and that many of the people who knew how to do this had already been acquired by the likes of AstraZeneca and GSK and felt that if we were quick and nimble we could get in there and, and create a business. Um, again I was able to rely a lot on the network of people that I had um, worked with and got, come to know during my days at Cambridge Antibody Technology. So the, the coming together of all of those factors, uh, having a team of great people, having the connections, uh, realising that there was possibly a place in the market for such a venture, uh, those are the things that really led to the company being started. What was the hardest thing you had to do? I would say for many people the answer to that is probably to jump, you know, to leave behind the safety and security of a job. Uh, in my case it was probably an assisted jump in that, uh, in the two situations when I went off to become a founder of a company, uh, the, the ground was falling beneath my feet. So initially I was at Amersham International and they were closing down the group I worked in and that made it easy to jump into Cambridge Antibody Technology as the germ of an idea. And again, at the uh, the university here, grant funding was coming to an end, and uh, I realised that there was perhaps a better opportunity for me uh, in the, uh, starting a company. And what skills and competencies did you already have from academic training, and what did you need to learn? So my um, initial academic years were spent in Glasgow, first at Strathclyde University, and then at the uh, university of Glasgow as a PhD student. Uh, I have to say the, there wasn't an awful lot of um, support there in terms of uh, thinking commercially or at least if there was I certainly wasn't out seeking it. I was very much uh, following this course to be an out and out scientist uh, academic. Um, I would say a lot of the learning I had was really on the job. So initially I worked at Amersham International in a relatively junior uh, role, but it was the beginning of exposure to working in a company. Uh, I'd say the real forming ground for me was being one of the founders at Cambridge Antibody Technology. Uh, I, st I was there when there was only two people, myself and our CEO. And by the time I left, there was 300, 400 people. And really throughout the 12 years I'd been there, it was just this process of continual change. I also learned the importance of teams and the importance of skills other than just being a scientist, um, you know, through operations, administration, finance, business development, and, you know, PR even uh, in the world outside. So that, for me, that was a, a strong learning of the, the importance of, of teamwork and the importance of other functions other than just having a cool scientific idea. And, I mean, how do you deal with the, the risks and the uncertainties involved in setting up a company? Well, I would certainly agree that there are risks and uncertainties. Um, to some people, I, I would say to that, um, 
and make it up as you go along. Um, maybe a, a more positive way to say that is uh, have f flexibility and just be ready to absorb change. Um, take your information from wherever. Never be so arrogant to believe that you've got nothing to learn. Continue learning and uh, adapting, I think, is how to survive. What brings you the greatest joy then in your role? Fundamentally, I'm still a scientist, so uh, I have to say when I can get, when I have time to join uh, group meetings and roll the sleeves up with some scientific problem, that's still what uh, you know what makes me tick and what makes me um, happy. I think um, I would say I also get a, uh, an amount of pride from being able to have set up this company from scratch uh, with no external venture capital funding and building it, bootstrapping our way up. Uh, to a company that currently employs 28 people. And how did you bring the team together and, and how has the dynamics of the team changed over time? Um, so was, how, how have I, sorry, repeat the question. Sorry, so you know, um, how did the team come together? Yeah. And how have the dynamics of the team changed over time? So how have the team come together? As I, as I say, I was, uh, Running a group here in the university, uh, I had some fantastic people, some of whom had worked with me uh, even prior to that uh, role. And fortunately, they were willing to be part of this new venture. Uh, in fact, in the beginning, um, we were out looking for business. I knew that there was a drop dead deadline of 30th of September. 2012. And fortunately for me, these guys hung around until we signed our first contract on the 1st of October. And uh, that afternoon, I handed out uh, three job offer letters. So having the, that group of people was certainly a fantastic help. Um, in the beginning, I had to look after all of the roles and functions myself. Um, but then at one point, we uh, were, I was able to recruit some senior people on the back of uh, of a great contract and uh, it, it came at fortunate timing because the company had grown to a point where I, I couldn't really manage to keep all the balls in the air myself. Um, and just being very clear on the functions of those people, operations, business and technical. And, and how did the company get its first capital to start? Um, we did not raise money through the typical standard VC route. I felt that uh, we had uh, capability that people wanted and so the first capital really was from upfront fees from our first contract and then working through on a monthly fees being paid and eventually reaching our first milestone and from there was able to recruit a few more people and have been able to just build up stepwise by bringing in more work bringing in more people in some ways that's also been a bit of a challenge to to balance that to ensure that uh, I don't have an outrageous burn rate on the one hand, but on the other hand that we've got the capability when the work comes in to, to do that. So that's uh, perhaps been uh, one challenge in, in a role like this, and I'm, and I'm sure it's the same with most ventures, even if they are VC funded as well. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about your first customer and how you identified and reached your first customer? Uh, so, first customer, um, I was fortunate enough from my uh, time at Cambridge Antibody Technology to have established a pretty uh, wide network of people and I think during my time there um, established trust with those people and so in the very beginning, uh, not just the first uh, contract we did but, but many of the first contracts during the first year or two uh, were actually with people who had either who I'd either worked with during those days at CAT uh, or people who'd been recommended to me by uh, contacts they had at CAT. So I think uh, that, that personal network uh, built up over the years at uh, CAT were enormously helpful. And have there been any changes over time to your current venture? Um, have there been changes over time? There certainly has. Um, so in effect what I've created was uh, an engine to bring in income and revenue by offering um, antibody drug discovery services to other companies. Um, but in many ways that provides the funding that's allowed us to invest in other technologies. I'd say we're, I've always pictured that as a short-term, medium-term, long-term game. Uh, I'd say we're in 
coming into the what I've perceived as the medium term. So we've during that short term period, we've been working on a particular technology that we're now out uh, licensing. And in fact, we announced our first deal uh, with Sanofi uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually. Um, and during this medium term period, we'll continue to, to look for further licensing opportunities. We have an additional technology that we're working on that I've always considered as the long term opportunity. Um, perhaps more risk there, but certainly more opportunity and reward. And I, we'll probably keep that under wraps for another year or so and hope to launch that in the world. So it's basically morphing from this fee for service model, which we'll continue to use, but beginning to uh, involve more of a licensing model where we're actually licensing out our own intellectual property. What are your current biggest challenges? Um, what, what are the current biggest challenges? Uh, I think keeping the balance between money coming in and money going out is fundamental. Mm -hmm. um, in particular, you know, managing the burn rate to make sure that we're not spending or have people who are idle waiting for things to happen. Um, on the other hand, ensuring we've got enough people, enough trained people to do what needs to be done. And what I find is that from the point of starting a contract negotiation to signing maybe of the order of six or 12 months, and from deciding you're going to recruit someone and having them in the front line is probably, well, it's at least six months as well. So one needs to have a little bit of a crystal ball. One way we, we sort of manage that <coughs> Is by or one thing that helps is having on the one hand this external facing fee for service operation and on the other hand uh, an internal facing technology development program. So in a way that acts as a buffer. So if things are uh, busy in one side, then I'll, you know, for example, externally, then I'll move people to work on internal projects. Um, and then there's always the continuing need to keep bringing in, in business uh, against a backdrop of a competitive environment. What were the most useful piece of advice you've been given? Um, there's a film that Gene Hackman plays uh, a role in, I think it's Enemy of the State, where his, uh, his friend says, wow, you were such a smart guy back there, and Gene Hackman says, I wasn't smart, and his friend says, what do you mean you weren't smart? He says, well, but that move you pulled back there, and Gene Hackman said, uh, you know what I do? He said, I'm not a smart guy, but I look at a situation and think to myself, what would a smart guy do here? And I just do that. So <laughs> I would say think like a smart guy and act like a smart guy. Um, yeah, uh, that, that's one piece, I guess. So what advice would you give to someone who wants to be more enterprising? Okay, so what advice would I give to, to, to up and coming postdocs? I'm reminded uh, of Alan Ashworth, who was ex-director at the Institute of Cancer Research. And when he moved to his new role in San Francisco, he was asked the same question. And his answer was uh, to young postdocs is, don't take advice from old farts like me. Um, having suggested that maybe we should continue learning, I would say uh, the advice I would give would be enjoy it. You know, From there comes everything else. From there comes your motivation, the desire to keep going through the hard times. From there you inculcate enthusiasm in the people who work with you. From there you, you give confidence to your clients and that can be customers or investors or even your staff. So enjoy it. It's not, this life's not a practice run. This is it. So make the most of it.